Hello and welcome to this Full Force movie special brought to you by GeneralsJoesReborn.com with me as your host, Chris Spoilers Ahead McLeod. Joining me for this special episode is Justin Generals Joes Bell. Let's get stuck into the latest movie news. <laughs> Justin, thank you for joining me, mate. I know it's been an absolute sure. terrible day for you, uh, <laughs> so I really appreciate you jumping on and doing this yeah, little, no little movie special, a uh, little separate additional extra for our for our fans, <laughs> for both of you, <laughs> both of our listeners. Um, we've had a few stories pop up, actually, and let, let's get stuck into the first one, which are very basic. And then after that, guys, there are going to be a lot of spoilers ahead. But don't worry, when we get to that point, I will warn you and also give you a little uh, section to fast forward to if you want to see the rest of the show. Yeah, you never know. Um, so... Paramount Pictures are releasing G.I. Joe Rise of Cobra and G.I. Joe Retaliation on 4K Ultra HD and Blu-ray formats in advance of the Snake Eyes G.I. Joe Origins movie dropping this summer. Both double disc sets will feature the previously I'm leaving that in. Both double your disc commentary yeah, on the whole thing. That's, yeah. that's my director commentary on both <laughs> movies. Both double disc sets will feature the previously released bonus features as well as director and producer commentaries. The Retaliation release will also feature a slew of new behind the scenes featurettes and both will be in stores on the 20th of July, just three days before the big day for Snake Eyes G.I. Joe Origins. Justin, will you be picking these up at all? Yeah, you know, I probably will. It's actually, it's funny, it's been a long time since I've actually bought a physical DVD. I've been all about streaming media lately, but... um, Stealing it. Yeah, no, I'm no, joking. buy it legally, but yeah. Um, <laughs> but no, I probably will pick these up. I mean, both just for the sake of completism and also because I'd love to see, you know, I, I, both of these movies get a much well-deserved bad rap, but um, they're still G.I. Joe movies and I still geek out a little bit when I watch them. So I uh, might as well have the best possible version of them. I don't even have a 4K HD TV, um, but you know, you never know. I might have one eventually at some point. Plus just seeing the behind the scenes stuff would be pretty cool. I mean, let's so, yeah, face it. Them. Let's face it. We need to see that Paris pursuit, uh, like <laughs> Delta six accelerator suit scene in crisp detail. Oh, totally. So that you can yes. make out all of the goofiness that goes on in that entire yes. scene. But no, oh, like absolutely. joking aside, there are some good moments in, in both movies, like, like fun moments. I mean, that, that in retaliation, that uh, ninja fight in the the Himalayas kind of thing yeah. is just unreal. I love. And that. you know, to be fair, I mean, as a GI Joe movie, that accelerator suit scene is ridiculous. If I was a ten year old kid and I saw that in the movies, I would just be like, "Oh, it was amazing!" You know, I need I, that, that would suit. Be blown away. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so I mean, you know, in fairness to they're they're trying to broaden the demographic a little bit, and when it comes to GI Joe, there is an element of that futuristic technology. It is a Hollywood movie. You need to do something to kind of wow the audience. There does need to be some spectacle. Um, so while, you know, I wasn't wild about it as a, you know, 40 year old GI Joe fan, I think, um, you know, you saw those things everywhere. I mean, they used them in all sorts of advertisements, all sorts of marketing stuff. You know, I, I think as a scene, it's fun and it works, you know, and especially if it's appealing to the wider audience. I think I'll be getting these just as a, you know, from a collector standpoint, just as like a collector's item. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, w- one thing I will point out is uh, we're not sure if the extended version, the extended cut of Retaliation is going to be involved right. on those releases. We just I'm, I'm assuming at the moment that it's the standard release and the bonus features for, yeah. uh, for both releases uh, and plus this new stuff that's coming along with it. Both will have digital copies as well attached to them. So, you, you know, if you do buy them, you'll have a, a digital version of those, those movies as well. Um, so, yeah. Oh, and deleted scenes as well. I, me- I forgot to mention that. There will be deleted scenes on the Retaliation uh, release. So possibly that could be your extended cut there, right. in a sense. You know, watch with deleted yeah. scenes, possibly. Yeah, I'm wondering, like, how much new stuff is, because I think a lot of the, the old release movies had a bunch of deleted scenes and stuff like that, too. So it'd be interesting to see, like, if this is actually new items that weren't featured there, or if it's just, like, the same stuff repurposed and hd because yeah i mean lord knows we all need to see like marlon wayans bloopers in 4k hd <laughs> there were so many of them <laughs> um anyway yeah that's i mean that's that that's that release that's all we can really talk about on it but um yeah that's obviously preceding the gi joe snake eyes or the gi joe origins snake eyes movie or the snake eyes gi joe origins movie by three days uh which will be again a nice bit of kind of bump in promo 
before we uh, before we start seeing that film which i'm man next story this is where we're going to get into some spoilerific in 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 info i nearly said Mm -hmm. i nearly said incest what is wrong with me anyway i I don't know what spoilers you were looking at i didn't say anything about that (laughs) anyway i'll tell you when the spoilers are going to happen but first at least join us for the the, the the scene that that breaks up the me talking with Justin here and us talking about the next scene, which is now. <laughs> that was a beautiful segue, Chris. You're an expert. I'm an expert segueist. Yeah. Um, <laughs> in the biggest news of the week in terms of the Snake Eyes movie, we had a huge plot reveal, and basically the biggest plot reveal you could ever have. Courtesy of World of Geekdom, the YouTuber explained the entire plot of the film after hearing all about it from a friend who had viewed one of the earlier test screenings. Now we are going to be getting into spoiler territory here, so if you want to avoid that, then skip forward to the time shown on screen now. Okay, I've got my editing ahead of me, haven't I? Okay, still here, good. Yeah, don't forget to put that in there, because I've already forgotten. Get stuff. I've, I've yeah. forgotten already. Uh, let's get into this, Justin. So, first off, and we'll, we'll we'll run through it, but then talk about it in each stage. So, sure. the first little bit of info that the the guy kind of explains that it, it, it's been described as a samurai ninja movie with great martial arts scenes and a third act with amazing sword fight scenes. So, straight away, I'm getting goosebumps talking about that, that in no that kidding. way because the, the the guy that saw this was so enamored with the actual fights choreography and everything and that's something that we've discussed in, in like you know in the build up to this film yeah uh, because that's all we've really seen isn't it like stunt choreography right right and and yeah i mean that's that's kind of what it's marketed itself around as sort of a, a throwback to the to martial arts movies you know that we've all all enjoyed and i kind of see it as sort of a love letter i mean as as kids of the 80s Um, I would say many of us probably saw, you know, Enter the Ninja, Return of the Ninja, all those various kind of, um, you know, really cool ninja martial arts related movies. Uh, And it just, this just seems like kind of a throwback and appropriate one too, because, you know, ninjas were all the rage back then. So, um, you know, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles just about to to launch into mainstream and with, you know, obviously, it was Chuck Norris and the Karate Commandos. There was a ninja character in He-Man. There was obviously G.I. Joe, Bruce Lee. Everywhere. yeah. It was, um, I don't think people really necessarily, some of the younger collectors might not realize just how huge the whole ninja phenomenon was um, back in that, you know, in that G.I. Joe heyday. And I think a lot of that was because of G.I. Joe. I mean, G.I. Joe was um, was one of the main entertainment brand of the 80s, and it was built around, you know, to an ele- to a degree, it was built around ninja. So I think that kind of brought some of that to the forefront even before a uh, uh, toy lion and in series like teenage mutant ninja turtles made it even more mainstream so yeah um there was you know it was a pretty hot topic back then you missed out three ninja kids as well in the uh... oh yeah of course and beverly hills ninja <laughs> Chris Hill, Farley. Yeah. Beverly Hills ninja. oh my god <laughs> so in the actual film itself um this has been described very very similar uh, to mortal Kombat in that it starts with a flashback snake eyes as a child with his father the yakuza are after his dad he hides snake eyes they kill the dad, burn the house down. So very similar to that opening Mortal Kombat scene. If you see eerily so, yeah. yeah, eerily so. It's like the same sort of, almost the same vibe exactly. It's kind of odd, but yeah. The only the only difference here being that you know that you had the I suppose the father being um, in the Mortal Kombat movie. The father was Scorpion, right? And right. it was it was about Scorpion and Sub Zero's like you know uh, rivalry and why they became yes. enemies uh, forever, kind of thing. But yeah, yeah, like we're getting a lot of these kind of um, comparisons. So Mortal Kombat is com- is compared to then that we also um, again like we fl- flash forward to Snake Eyes as an MMA fighter working different mm-hmm. jobs to make ends meet in a very similar way to Mortal Kombat again but also Man of Steel was mentioned uh, you know that kind of like working like the everyman jobs but being like yep. you know someone a, a little bit special still uh, but just not quite hasn't quite found himself yet right yep I think it's a good comparison yeah and then we get Kenta the main villain 
uh, kind of enter the fray. Now, the the guy that was describing it didn't say Kenta Ken, didn't say Kenta's name. He didn't know the name of the villain, uh, or he didn't get that information. But that I'm guessing is who he's describing as the main yep. villain. Uh, he comes to the gym to recruit Snake Eyes, claiming that he will help him get revenge for the death of his father. Also claims to have knowledge of the man who actually killed him. Um, so obviously that kind of you know that that fuels Snake Eyes to to join this ninja clan um, and and kind of help out. Now that's where we meet Storm Shadow for the first time, but he's not called mm-hmm. Storm Shadow at this point. Um, the the ninja clan are met, meet up in this warehouse where they're smuggling weapons. Storm Shadow is confronted by Kenta for breaking the code of the clan and orders Snake Eyes to kill him, but Snake Eyes refuses. And this is where we get this amazing warehouse scene that we also saw behind the scenes video from way back before they started filming. And this is really interesting because what was described here was almost like the Batman Begins kind of scene. Mm-hmm. Um, what what are your thoughts on that? Because I mean, that sound this sounds like it's going to be a fun fight, doesn't it? In this in this warehouse. Oh yeah, I, I definitely could. I mean, there's lots of different elements that could be used. Um, you know, I, I'm kind of thinking a little bit of sort of the Daredevil Netflix series. There was a couple of, of combat scenes there, and sort of a similar sort of you know more of a pier than a warehouse, but you know using the containers to hide themselves and sort of jumping in and out. And I could see some really cool um, you know martial arts combat kind of spinning out of that. That's a pretty fun idea. I like it. Absolutely. And what what kind of screams to me is things like. Um, you know, like the one, sh- the one and done shot, kind of one continuous shot, kind oh, of scenes. Yeah. Now, I'm yeah, not sure yeah. if they, I'm not sure if they use it for this scene, but I've got a feeling because that's a, well, quite a trend at the moment. I've got a feeling it they is. might try and do that with this stunt team because I've yeah. seen a couple of those kind of style film shots yeah. with this stunt team in the past, and it's amazing. Gotcha. Yeah, I mean that kind of goes back to the Daredevil comparison I was making because Daredevil is pretty infamous. I think they've tried to do. Um, in all three seasons of Daredevil, they tried to do one major kind of one take scene where you'd like the camera follows them all the way through, never cuts away or anything like that. And you sort of see all the action take place. And um, if it's done effectively, it can be amazing. I think um, actually one of my favorite examples of this was actually in a movie called, I think it was Extraction with Chris Hemsworth. That was a Netflix movie. Um, ironically, I think by, produced by the Russo brothers, I believe. That was really good. Actually, I really enjoyed that. It was a great movie. Yeah. And they did a whole one take thing of a car chase where it was done so well, you didn't really realize it was. And then you like read an article afterwards, you're like, really, it wasn't. You go back and watch and you can really, it's, it's, it's astounding with technology and with, you know, cinematography and with the skill of the directors, what they can achieve with this sort of nuance, um, you know, directing method. And I think if they can work some of that stuff into this, which seems to be, I mean, this kind of style seems to be a, a fallback for some of those, you know, Japanese martial arts films. I've seen a lot of those one take sort of scenes. So yeah, if they can tap into that, I think it'd be pretty amazing. Absolutely. I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm actually getting kind of goosebumps talking about this at the moment. I'm really excited yeah. to see what they do with it. So they both escape and this is where Storm Shadow asks Snake Eyes to come and train with him at the Arashikagi village, basically to say thank you for not killing him and also like, you know, helping him escape. So this is also what was mentioned here was there's lots and beautiful cinematography of Japan um, in this film, which is another nice touch to, you know, that we had some nice shots in Retaliation, I remember, when they're walking through the mountains. But I've got I've got a feeling they're going to lean quite heavily into the cinematography in this one. Yeah, it seems like it. They've definitely identified that throughout the production cycle as being a very central focus. You know, it's Japan is sort of the where this is being born out of. Yeah. Um, we also were told that it's it's better than Mortal Kombat um, in terms of more heart, more emotional, more kind of substance. So that's another kind of like but positive to kind of take from this. Now, um, Snake Eyes trains with all the different masters to learn new skills: blind, hard, soft, etc. So the blind master, played by Peter Menser, who is you know like the um, like perfect for this role, I think. You know, very very much you know like also you know a black actor as well. So fits the bill for the original um kind of uh comic version as well but he's trying to teach him in a piece which is something that kind of comes up a lot in this in this film and it's kind of like a recurring plot throughout like there's a big training scene scene with a pit of snakes which he falls in or maybe one or two snakes and i can't remember what the guy said maybe a giant snake i think he mentions something like that but he does he fails that that particular uh training a session because he can't find that in a piece yet so he's constantly fighting this revenge 
aspect in the film, yeah. I guess. Um, yeah. And then we're told that the village is actually pr- pr- protecting a mystical artifact. And this is where it gets kind of like, I, I feel like they're trying to get into kind of like the Marvel era, like kind of mm-hmm. f- scene here. And also, this is not the first time G.I. Joe has been, you know, uh, kind of used with mystical, right. uh, magical kind of sci-fi things. Uh, and we get this artifact which can turn people to dust. And obviously, Kenta and the villainous clan want this stone as well. What are your thoughts of this as a as a MacGuffin? <laughs> You know, it's not bad. You know, it could could be worse. I think um, you always walk that careful line with G.I. Joe between fantasy and reality. Um, it's always, G.I. Joe has always had one foot in the fantasy or sci-fi camp. Um, typically, it's been more sci-fi than fantasies. So, like, artif- mystical artifacts, I'm not sure I'm sold on that yet. Um, but, I mean, obviously, Sunbow was heavy into that sort of stuff. There's a lot of sort of mystical artifacts in Sunbow or, or various different artifacts, um, where typically in the Marvel series, it was more kind of future technology sort of thing. Although in later years, you know, Larry did obviously work in a lot of other stuff, especially with some of the, you know, mystical ninja swords and things like that. So, I mean, there is, there certainly are some elements of that. And I think to a degree, G.I. Joe kind of has to do that, Um you know, otherwise it's just another ninja movie. Yeah, um, yeah. So I, I can see why they did it. Um, it is somewhat at least understated. It, it's an artifact that has pretty, you know, severe consequences, but it's not like, you know, a, a pyramid of darkness that kills power across <laughs> the universe like that. But, um, but, and obviously they have also got to do something to j- kind of draw Cobra in. I mean, what would Cobra be interested in with this group rather than you're just trying to recruit storm shadow or whatever there's got to be a reason why cobra is focused on the arashikagi clan to begin with and the existence of this sort of larger than life artifact might explain why it's gotten cobra's attention and why it's so important to them so that's a really um, good point yeah that's a really i can see i can see why they did it i'm not i'm not 100 percent sold on it but you know we'll see what happens I'm, i always keep a positive outlook on on some of this stuff i want to see kind of how they execute it um you know, in reality, but, uh, but yeah, yeah I mean, it's, it's, it, it is what it is. Yeah. I, I agree with that. This reminds me actually of the manga Arashikagi showdown comic, which oh, came yeah. out a while back because yeah. they had, I think storm shadow in the end, like there's, it's an amulet, um, that they yeah. kind of like the jewel of something. I forget the name, like the jewel of the golden sun or something like that. And they, it has magical powers and you don't see what those powers are. They're just all after this thing, the whole comic. And then right. at the end, Storm Shadow like buries it by using the power to lift the earth up, like, like the ground up to throw right. it under the, and then drop it in. So that kind of reminds me of that. Like I feel like they they might have taken some, um, you know, some comparisons from that, uh, yeah. some inspiration from that 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 kind of aspect. Anyway, previously to this stage of the film, Snake Eyes was ordered to steal the stone, um, so he goes back to the Arashikagi clan with that you know that knowing that if he gets this stone for them he's going to be able to get his revenge on the guy that killed his father Mm -hmm. so um we find out at this point that baroness and cobra are behind the villainous clan and they tease the cobra insignia on some of the weapons crates which is quite fun so this is a nice way of bringing the baroness into it and to bring cobra into it isn't it definitely like we were just saying with the artifact i mean there's got to be a reason why they're kind of behind this clan maybe they're kind of leveraging the clan to get the artifact because there needs to be some i mean if cobra really is sort of this global or is going to become this global terrorist organization there has to be a reason why they're in bed with the Arashikag with this evil ninja clan so um the artifact would certainly help explain that you know what what would drive them to want to connect with this with this group so i, I think they do that well Absolutely. Um, Snake Eyes gets caught trying to steal the stone under orders. There's a friggin' fire engine going past, as always. <laughs> Snake Eyes gets caught trying to steal the stone under orders from Kenta, who still has the info he needs on the guy who killed his father. So even though he doesn't want to do it, his need for revenge is stronger. Uh, so that's kind of, again, like, you know, they're playing that up all the way throughout the film. Uh, the leader of the clan, this is where it's revealed that the leader of the Arashikagi clan is is the granny Arashikagi. So she's yeah. been utilised in the Real American Hero comics a lot recently. Um, and apparently in this film, she kicks a lot of ass in the movie, which I am so excited to see. Do you know what I mean? I really want, I want to yeah. see her being like an ultimate badass. Um, That'd be pretty cool. How much fun is that going to be? I wonder if she's going to yeah. have a brick in a handbag like Larry. <laughs> <laughs> That's like one of her main weapons is that, that she carries is. a brick in a handbag. Yeah, that is. Um, obviously she banishes Snake Eyes from the village Storm Shadow also gets chastised for bringing in an outsider 
and I think he they did, I'm not sure if it was mentioned but I believe he also gets kind of cast away yeah. um, he ends up feeling really betrayed by Snake Eyes and obviously that plays into the rival, rivalry that will build later um, mm-hmm. apparently there are tons of easter eggs in the film for Joe fans um, and then like following that Snake Eyes somehow succeeds in stealing the stone gets the chance at revenge with the guy you know he, he swaps that then with this information for the guy who murdered his father chained up yeah so and so in that that moment where Snake Eyes is with this guy who's chained up you know ready to be killed I guess uh, it leads to a flashback and in this flashback this is where we learn that his act- Snake Eyes father was an original member of G.I. Joe before it was called G.I. Joe so this mm-hmm. is the first time we realized that um, Snake Eyes decides to free the man instead and doesn't kill him and I guess that is like the the element where he finally learns to to accept inner peace I guess yeah. uh, in that in that sense and that's what that that's leading to uh, him making the right decision and I mean what are your thoughts on his dad being a member of G.I. Joe I think that's a neat connection. Um, yeah, I mean, that makes sense uh, in sort of the, you know, kind of carrying it to the next generation. I mean, G.I. Joe's been around for a long time at this point. So establishing it as some sort of historical organization, I think, is interesting. It, it, it kind of fascinates me a little bit how how they seem to weave these common ties sort of throughout all of these movies. And I don't know why they do it this way um but i mean in retaliation obviously you know bruce willis was the original gi joe so they went again with a callback to an older gi joe team and then they're doing that again here with with snake eyes and so that definitely seems to be some kind of recurring theme they like to have throughout these movies for whatever reason you know and also retaliation there was you know rumors that an original draft of that script the sword that snake eyes uses had like mystical or magical elements i don't know if it was like this but um, so you, you can kind of sense these underlying themes that for whatever reason, everybody who you know writes a script for a G.I. Joe film finds it necessary to include these pieces. Um, but I like how they're doing it here because, you know, why else would Snake Eyes have this connection to G.I. Joe? I mean, in in uh, in the comics, obviously, he was sort of an already established member of the G.I. Joe team when he got scarred and you know, lost his voice and everything. So he was recruited just based on his you know, military prowess. Uh, here, he doesn't have any military prowess. He's an MMA, MMA fighter. I mean, it doesn't really go into detail about whether or not he actually was in the military between the flashback and his time with the MMA, you know, in the MMA fight, fighting ring. But um, you're going to assume that he wasn't an actual soldier. So how does he get tied? What is this G.I. Joe organization? I would estimate, or I would figure that if this G.I. Joe team member was in Japan, it's probably not like an American military organization. It might be something else. Um, I, I don't really know. It'll be interesting to see kind of how they tie that all together. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I like how they do it and how they give him that connection to some past member of the of the team and maybe we'll sow the seeds of him wanting to join that same organization in the future. Absolutely. And a couple of other things that kind of cropped up there. The morning Light, his sword... Uh, which Henry Golding has said gets a storyline effectively uh, in yeah. the film didn't get mentioned. I don't think in the um, in this particular uh, video, or it doesn't right. really they, they don't really talk about it as like a thing. I wonder if that was part of the reshoots because this was from an early test screening. I don't think this was from the recent test screening. Oh, gotcha. I think it's from a much earlier test screening. So mm-hmm. um, with that in in case, there's probably some more things that that we haven't discussed today that will end up in the film, including how Morning Light comes about. So yeah. I, I will also say that we're, we're taking, uh, I, you know, I would say, I wouldn't say this is exactly confirmed. It's not like, yeah. it, it sounds very legitimate is all I'm going to say. And it yeah. sounds very believable as, a, you know, as to what we've seen and heard so far. And in relation to that early script that that was leaked a while back, which had a lot of these kind of, like you felt like this is what the, the what they were getting at when you read yeah. it out this way. So I definitely think this is probably what we're going to see in the film. Um, but having said that, there's probably going to be a lot more in there that we're not discussing, uh, including those right. Joe Easter eggs, which I'm really excited to see. You know uh, what those actually are. Um, yeah. Now, obviously, the um, that that kind of that flashback scene that where Snake Eyes decides against killing the man who get, killed his father leads to a crazy freeway chase scene, which we also saw behind the scenes video of early in the filming, way back in, you know, 1910 or whenever the bloody <laughs> started filming on this movie. 
So that's going to be really exciting to see, I think. Um, and, you know, again, <laughs> I wonder if we'll see um, the the spinning on the motorcycle fight. <laughs> Rock and sock them. We'd better. <laughs> and it has to be like that. Their feet yeah. have to be, like, attached to the to the motorcycle and spin round like just that. just kind of spins in a pirouette. Yeah. That would be hilarious. Um, and then, obviously, this little leads to a final battle with Kenta, which involves Scarlet, who I haven't mentioned so far, but apparently she does appear during the film very infrequently right. and was described almost as, like, a guide, but she shows up mainly for this, this final battle. Uh, and this is where I think he, um, the video mentions this is where Snake Eyes dons his uniform and all that stuff as yes, well. Yes, yes, that's something I did actually forget. But he does mention that, yeah. doesn't he? This is where he finally yeah. gets that that costume. Um, yeah. yeah, and also this is also where he overcomes that inner peace issue to finally win the day, uh, defeat Kenta. Um, we uh, uh, there's a, a few other things I, I've completely forgotten from that video, but um, uh, we do know that there is a mid credit scene with the Baroness and Storm Shadow where he actually finally is described. He says to her, call me Storm Shadow. And that's the first time we hear that code name being utilised. Yeah. So, and, and effectively, this is where Baroness is kind of recruiting him into the Cobra ranks uh, yeah. and where I feel like this rivalry between Storm Shadow and Snake Eyes is going to kind of build um, over the, you know, the, the next course of films. Yeah, pretty cool overall. I was very positive about the overall plot. Um, I must admit, I'm still a bit bit of trepidation regarding the mystical artifact. Yeah, but it's not the first time we've seen this kind of stuff with Joe. But I mean, what are your overall thoughts uh, with this with this plot? So, kind of like why this why I think there's an air of legitimacy to what we saw in this video and why it rings true is because there are some of those elements that kind of carry forward from the previous movies and you can kind of see where the filmmakers get some of this stuff from you know with the mystical elements i agree i'm not real sold on it um but you know i'm I'm willing to see kind of how it how it is presented in the film um a few interesting notes that i saw is that you know um snake eyes doesn't appear to get scarred in this movie he doesn't appear to lose his voice i don't know if they're kind of saving that for a future film but i was kind of hoping that we would kind of see how they were approaching that. Because I think all of us have sort of wondered, you cast this Hollywood, you know, superstar actor and Henry Golding, you know, what what's going to happen? Is he going to appear in future movies with a mat wearing a mask all the time and not speaking? You know, it doesn't seem likely. So how are they going to handle that? So it doesn't seem, at least from this initial screening report, that that question is necessarily going to be answered. Who knows? Maybe it will. Maybe this guy just didn't think that was an important piece of information. But Or maybe it happens at the beginning of the G.I. Joe movie or something. I don't know. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we'll have to see how they handle that. Because um, I, I know a lot of people have kind of thrown a fit about Golding's casting. You know, say so it doesn't fit, you know, who Snake Eyes is. He's always been sort of the American G.I. who was in you know, the Arashikagi clan was a true outsider, you know, and was really, um, and that really drove a lot of the dynamic between him and Storm Shadow, which I can get, but some of what we've seen here kind of still maintains that sense, and I think does it pretty effectively. But where I, where I kind of see where some of the fans are coming from is that a big part of Snake Eye's character is his, you know, his lack of a voice and his, you know, disfigurement. I mean, that's driven so much of what snake eyes is if they don't do that you know how is he you know how how will they mirror kind of that emotion and that sense of of you know, tragedy yeah yeah the tragedy yeah i mean that's what snake eyes has been built around so many tragic events in his past yet he's found a way to kind of advance himself beyond that and and in a way become the best version of himself in spite of all these constant obstacles and it's not just about his family being killed in the car accident it's not just about him losing his voice it's not just about him being disfigured you know losing his essentially his brother um you know finding out that you know you know thinking that his his brother killed the hard master or whatever for mm -hmm. so many years um there's just so much tragedy that he's had to get through um that i think makes up really the core of the character that i'm i'm intrigued to see how they handle that um how they address that Henry Golding is, you know, such a, a great actor and, and such an engaging personality. I still am questioning, you know, how they will kind of shift him into the snake eyes we all know, or if they will. And mm. if they don't do what we expect, um, how they can kind of mirror that sense in other ways. Um, I'm not saying they can't. I'm, I'm sure they'll, they may find some way to do it. But 
Um, but all, I mean, all in all, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. I think as, as with any Hollywood production, how the film looks is, is a very large part of its success. I mean, a film like this, um, and I think we'll all agree, is not based around its intricate plot details. It's mostly, you know, built upon people sitting in the theater and going, wow, that was mm. awesome. You know, I mean, that sort of thing. You know, a lot of these action films, these licensed films, you break them down to a script and it's shallow as anything, but it's just, it's how it looks yeah. on the screen, how the characters jump out at you, what the action is like. Yeah, I mean, one really of, one, kind of frames it. One film like that was The Raid, which is one of the most basic things. Yeah. The basic premise has been done multiple times in, in other yeah. films. Just, you know, trying to escape, like, you know, uh, escape a building that's that's full of bad guys. Yeah. And it's all about the fight scenes and how incredible they are and how long exactly. they go on for. There's one that's about 10 minutes long. Yeah. And it's unreal. But, like, it, that's why I'm, 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 I'm just really excited to see that action aspect. Yeah. Of this I film. mean, John, John Wick. John Wick is the shallowest movie you can expect if you break it down to a script i mean in movie one you know spoiler alert his his dog gets killed and he gets angry and wants to get revenge on the russians i mean you have to remind like, me of that <laughs> that's so shallow but it's the way they just they kind of portray that action yeah that is amazing and i still remember you know, john wick three by that point i'm like yeah this is okay and then you know he's riding a horse and fighting people with motorcycles and a sword and i'm just like holy shit, that's awesome I mean, it's it really is what they do on the screen that that can make control whether the movie lives or dies absolutely absolutely uh, a couple more points I'll, i will just make uh, out here is that one this was like i said an early test screening so I'm, I'm imagining more things have been added elements have been added possibly even something to go along with the whole snake eyes disfigurement scenario if they're going to yeah. go that way that is a possibility this is not the this is not the be all and end all of, of everything of course, yeah. this could be different um and also um, you know, those aspects could be changed with uh, what we had recently in reshoots. So there could have been reshoots done based on uh, the response from the test screenings where they said, why do, Why can he talk? Like, sh- sh- that, that should be dealt with. Or, you know, that those kind of aspects right. could have been like, yeah, a lot of people are saying that he should be like Snake Eyes in general and have no, yep. you know, have the mask and, and, the, and the no voice and everything. So that's something else they, they might even do. You never know. So we'll right. we'll see, I guess. But yeah. um, I, all in all, when I first re- listened to that video, I was very, like, I was pumped. I'm like, oh, oh cool. Yeah. Like, it could be doing really good things. And he, if it is, you know, better than than a number of films that are already out there, that's enough for me right now, you know? Yeah. Like, let, let's let's enjoy what, what comes out, hopefully. And, uh, yeah, I'm t- mate, when's this trailer dropping? Oh, my God. It's un- I mean, it's almost May. It's going to be May. <laughs> I mean, that's going to draw. I mean, it goes back to what I was saying about how so much of this is visual. Um, you know, you can talk about what happens in the movie all you want, but until you get that visual aspect, mm. you just don't know. So, I mean, that trailer is really going to, I think, kind of drive what, you know, the, the buzz that goes into the movie because um, you can say that they have a great freeway chase scene. And it's a completely different thing than seeing the freeway chase screen take place on the screen and seeing what they do, what yeah. they do, you know, how they do it differently. Um, because, you know, how many freeway chase scenes have there been in the history of Hollywood? I've and seen four today. Them. I've seen four today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, what are they going to do that makes this one different? You know, yeah. and I think, um, you know, Transformers is a great example of that. Like the first Transformers film, um, you know, back before Michael Bay kind of hammered it into, into pulp. Um, I remember that freeway chase scene in the Transformers movie where if I had read on the screen, you know, a freeway chase scene is some big deal. But then seeing like it actually unfold on screen, that was one of the highlights of that first film, mm. probably one of the highlights of the entire franchise. Yeah. So it's like, how how do they do that? And you see Snake Eyes kind of leaping from car to car. And I mean, it could, you know, they could do some really cool things. That reminds me of that uh, Rise of Cobra scene, the Paris Pursuit, where Snake Eyes, uh, the, the, car, the car is on crashes yes. and he jumps off it flips and like la- like la- oh, i can't even remember how he does it it's just so weird and gross but anyway yeah. i hope we're not seeing I, much i'll of tell that. you it's weird and gross but the first time i saw that in the trailer i was like holy snake eyes just flipped on a car he flipped yeah. grabs it spins sideways almost yeah, and then lands on weird. top of it yeah yeah it was yeah. it was so totally weird. improbable and the bodysuit is terrible but you know the I'll first time what, i saw that i was on board i was when i saw that when I, I saw it ray park's photo shoot for that first suit i thought oh this is amazing it was my profile picture and banner picture for ages on yeah. facebook 
If you don't believe me, go check it out. But yeah, I'm super excited still. Not gonna. The, the, I'm, and I had to really, I had to listen to that video. I just wanted to know a few yeah. things. Um, and and I'm kind of glad I did because it's it's actually made me more excited for this. Yeah. So, uh, Justin, mate, thanks for jumping on and chatting sure. for this this movie special. I know you, you your time is precious at the moment, but I really really appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely, happy to. Well, happy or <laughs> better than what I've been doing all day. I can imagine. Um, in fact, <laughs> don't, please don't tell us. We'll just we'll get a tra- Can you can you film a trailer of what you're doing during the day? <laughs> And then, it would not be nearly as exciting as Ray Park flipping on a car. <laughs> can, can I see you in a Delta 6 Accelerate? Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll get myself all suited up and then uh, I'll show you the firewall that broke and caused all sorts of chaos. What yeah. we've got here is a Delta 6 firewall suit. Anyway, oh so God. that was my that was my heavy duty impression, but mixed in with what you're having to deal with today. Oh, lovely. Anyway, that brings us to the end of this special episode. Thank you for watching this Full Force movie special. Massive thank you to my awesome co-host, Justin Generals Joe's Bell. See you next time, and as always, after three, one, two, three, full fours! Make sure you get involved with the discussion by liking, sharing and commenting on these videos and as always you can keep up with the show after listening by following on Twitter at The Full Force, liking the Facebook page facebook.com forward slash The Full Force and if you would like to contact the show you can message us on either of those platforms with feedback and questions. We also have a Patreon page, so if you want to show your support for the show, see your name up in lights on these videos, or enjoy exclusive bonus content, then check out patreon.com forward slash the full force podcast, or click the link on any of the posts this podcast appears in. Full Force.